I'm Patrick Bailey with IQS.com. Today is December 19th, 2020, and in this video I'll be going over the wall mount system I designed to hang my 3D printed chains up. Okay, so well over a year ago, I decided to 3D print a bunch of chains in a big long length, and the reason I did that uh, was I wanted to use it to represent the debt that I was accruing to buy a house. You know, about a year, well, it's well over a year now, a year and a half ago, we bought a new house, and to do that, of course, we had to you know, get a, we've had a, we had a good down payment. We did a good job, but of course we had to take a loan out. So I hate debt. So to stick it in my face and I have to look at it all the time, I decided to, uh, make these chains and each chain in my case represents a thousand dollars of debt on my house. And as we pay the, th the house off, we cut up the chains and, you know, become free. We break the chains of debt, right? So, uh, part of that was, you know, I think it was well over a year ago, I, I looked at some 3D designs and how they did these chains and I figured out how to put text on them. So actually there's numbers on them to actually represent the number of debt. So someday when I get down to 10 grand left, there'll be 10 chains. They'll be numbered one, two, three, all the way to 10. I can cut them. Um, so that was a lot of fun. But also I had to go figure out how to um, mount them together because I don't have a... Well, there are some cool 3D printers out now that are in production. Uh, at least for uh, you know, home use now that actually have like, um, uh, I saw some 3D printing guy, there, there's a, that have, I've seen them for a while where they have a tread. And so the idea was you can continuously print things. And so in theory, if those work well enough, you could continuously print these in one go. But I don't have that. Um, and at the time, they really, there were some around, but not many. And even now, I, I don't have one. So I invented a little system that I could mount to my 3D printer so that I could could combine the chains. It was a lot, it was a big chore, but I actually got all these chains connected one at a time. I should say one at a time. You print out little small lengths and you print in an inner length and it took a long time, but we got it all done. And I made a couple of videos on that. So I'll share the video links in the video, links to the video in the show notes. So there's some of them here where I'm like designing a chain. This is one where I'm using my connected chain system. And so anyway, but since then, since we moved in the house, all these, this big chain of pot, big pile of chains, has just been laying on the ground in a clump. So it's been in my way, which is good because it reminds me I have this debt. Uh, but also it's not nearly as visual as having it hang around my room. So now you can see it behind me and I can unfortunately look around my room. It kind of keeps continuing. Um, but uh, this week I kind of got fed up with it and said, okay, let me go design a wall mount system, 3D print something so I can stick it up there simply and get it going. Uh, so with that, I'm gonna go over some quick details and then we'll go in more in depth. So first of all, I've actually put these out on uh, Prusa. So here, I'll put a link in the show notes, but this is on Prusa printers, it's 49252, and you can go find that. Uh, or on Thingiverse, it happens to be Thing 4690572. You can go download them, check them out, and print them out. Uh, and the basic idea is you have some little tiny thing like this that you print and you mount on the wall. I like going right into a stud in this case. Uh, and what it has is it has a little bit of space on here, and then you have something else that can go over it and then hook on. So in this case, I don't know how well we'll visualize it right now, but we have that hooked onto a wall, and then we have this that has a matching gap, in fact a bigger one, put it over and kind of snap it in. Well, sometimes it snaps in, but it goes over, holds down, and you're good. Um, now, uh, let me go over the numbers real quick just so you have them. Now, to print this particular guy, just these two, it took about one hour and 38 minutes. It takes 1.6 inches of electricity, and it weighs 0 0.016 kilograms, and at $20 per kilogram comes out to 32 cents of the material. So total cost to print one of these is about 32 cents, so not much. Um, in addition to that, there's other things you can print. Uh, well, I made one more thing. I made, I made a little knob just to prove you could do something else. Um, but also, this was printed like this. So this is not going to be quite as strong. I don't know if I trust it to hang anything very weighty on it, but there's some other ideas that I could do. Uh, but anyway, with that, um, eh, it's been fun. I got it hanging up. So now let me go over, uh, just kind of showing it real quick. And then after that, I'm going to go in and sh and go into Fusion 360 where I designed it and kind of remake it. Okay, so let me show real quick how I stuck it in. I got my pieces parts here. So I just happen to be using one and five eight screws. That's just kind of how I design it because I got a lot of those lying around. And so here's my two little pieces. 
So what I did, you gotta go find a stud because this I, I want to put these on studs. And uh, one weird way to find studs without a stud finder is most of these guys when they're putting the drywall in, of course they're they're gonna nail the drywall in at the right spot. So there's all these metal nails back here. So you can take a nice magnet, you need a strong one, and kind of go back and forth and find a stud. Then find a couple of them, and then you kind of have the line. It's not perfect. I mean, someone could put a nail in the wrong place, but more often than not, they seem to nail it. And they did in this case. So I drilled a hole, got it in there, and then I got this upside down right now. And then if you can see, I don't know how well it shows up on the tape. I do, on the recording, I do have a line right there. There's a line at the bottom to help you line it up to go straight up and down just in case. I don't think it's a big deal, but hey, every little bit helps. And these should be able to hold a they should be able to hold a lot of weight, I imagine. And but these plastic pieces. So there we are, you can see we got the little space in the back. We got that. Kind of, it's pretty firm back there against the wall. In fact, you can see it sometimes snaps in. Not that it's, see, you can still wiggle it off, but I figure these static loads, it should be fine. Boom, done. Good enough for me, but some other place where you're going to have some back and forth rocking, you probably want to do a different design. Like I've been thinking about making that line longer, more like a rectangle to go on, but I didn't need that for this and this. <laughs> what did I do? Oh, I just jerked it off, huh? Well, that's fun to exciting to capture on film. It's fine. I just jerked it too hard, I guess. Didn't break anything. Okay, well. It makes the video more exciting, right? Now I designed this whole thing in Fusion 360. It could pretty easily be done in uh, OpenSCAD, but I didn't in Fusion 360, so let me go through the process and try to repeat what I did closely so you get an idea. Make your own, right? Make your own design. And as, uh, <laughs> as I showed, uh, mine has a problem. You could jerk it a little bit too hard and things could fall down, so there's definitely room for a lot of improvement in this design. But with that, I put got a 10 minute timer. Let me see if I can get this redone in 10 minutes. So there we go. So here I am in Fusion 360. I'll right click on this and say new component. Hit OK. <clears throat> and I'll call this wall mount. Boom. Open that up. Do the origin. Click on that plane. Say create a sketch as a right click. And then go look at the top. <clears throat> hit my S key with that has all my shortcuts. And I'll hit here on a circle. There, and we'll say, uh, this is doing the diameter, and I have the radius written over here, so I can do, the radius is 15 times 2 of the diameter. That's a nice thing in OpenSCAD, you can do all this math, which I like a lot. Okay, so now I'll say, hit the L key, come up here, do that. I'll make that a construction line, which means I can use it, but it's not going to apply. Hit the L key, go there, go up 3 millimeters, L key hit here. Three millimeters, hit enter, connect those two, and then I go here and go down three. And for those who aren't familiar, here I'm connected to this point. If I go over here, you can see I have the uh, millimeters chosen right now, and I can actually type in. So I can say three, and I can lock it in. And that way, it's just kind of a nice feature. Here I'll go up three, boom. And go over three, boom, and connect those two. There we go. So now I got what I want. And I'll hit T, hit the T key and go to my trim mode. And I'll trim all this stuff out that I don't need. I do need that. And there we go. And now I'll do a mirror. Use the mirror tool. And I'll select all the pieces, parts that I want including that one, that one. And select the mirror line, which would be this line. Hit OK, boom, perfect mirror. T for trim, remove that, remove that, remove that. 
And I think we're good. I can just move that out of the way so I can see a little better. Cool. So now I can select that, select that. Perfect. Okay, do a circle. I need a diameter of four. Do another one with a diameter of eight. Perfect. Got everything I need. So I hit finish sketch. And then what I'm going to do is I'll select pretty much everything except for the very inner circle. Hit Q for my press pull tool. And I'll pull this up six millimeters. Hit enter. And then I can bring this down. Uh, and I can hide the body. I don't want to see it for a second. Bring back the sketch so I can see it. Click on this. Press Q for press pull tool. Bring it up. Bring back the body so I can see that I'm cutting it. I want to do a two-sided one. I'm going to say distance to object to the top. And then here I want to drag this bottom one down. And I want that to be a distance of negative three. Boom, and we get that little cut there that I want. Oh, you know, I forgot one more thing for my sketch. Let me go right click on here, go back to edit my sketch. One other thing I want is that line that I made. So I can click on here, make a little area where I'm going to put a line. Okay, finish that. The nice thing doesn't affect anything that I did that. Okay, now I'll go to the bottom. I'm going to click on this outer circle. Hit Q and go up, you know, like one or one and a half. And that's so I can hide the head of my um, screw in there. So that works just fine. And then let me select this guy, this area. Okay. And Q for a press pull tool. And what I want to do is I can go up and see this makes a square. But I can come back and I can change the taper angle and I want it to angle in. So I can say negative 35 as an example. And then it tapers into an angle. And if I go look at it, boom, you see? It kind of makes this little cool angle, which makes it easier to print. And we're almost done. Just to make it a little easier on the connection, I can I can go here on chamfer and I can select that, that, that. That, that, and I can go in probably 0.5, and then I can do it again on the bottom, just so things uh, don't hook in quite as bad. 0.5, boom, there, you're done. Now, doing a chamfer like an open SCAD would be a lot more difficult, but there are ways mathematically to do it, but it's kind of more difficult. In Fusion 360, very easy. Okay, done with that one. Uh, and then we'll say new component, hit OK, and this will be the hook, boom, and here I'll hide this wall mount for now, I don't want to see it, and I'll come over here, let me go to my drawing, my cheat sheet, okay, so right click on that, create a sketch, uh, let me, okay, make sure I lined that before, hit my S key, hit that, now for my outer circle I was doing, let's see, 45. And I have a little inner circle here. It's doing, and then it's, I have a radius again, so 19 times two, do the math. There we go. And then, let's see, a line from here. I'm going up 21 middle of, oh, 12, not 21, 12, 12. Read my notes wrong. And I'll make that a construction line because I don't really need it. Here I'll go over three, uh, here I'll go up three, maybe. I'll go up three, we'll hit L. We'll go across seven, and then we will match those up. And then I'll hit S and I'll do a mirror again. So I'll select that one, that one, that one, and that one, and then select the line to mirror across. And there we go. And then I can, I could leave it there or trim it. I don't want to trim it for now. Okay, so I'll trim that, trim that, trim that. There we go. And escape. Move these out of line just so it's easier to see. Now I can go click on the visual so I can see the other wall mount, and you can see how they lines up just perfectly so it should kind of snap on in the back. So now hide that again, hit finish sketch, uh, select that, press the press pull tool, and now this is the 
section is going to be behind the back. So I could make it three millimeters, but the other one's three millimeters too, and so there might be a problem. So I went with, with 2.8. That seemed to work. That gave me a little more wiggle room against the wall. And then we can right click on here, create a sketch. So now I'm creating a sketch on the top of the plan I just made. Um, make a circle here again. Boom. Finish the sketch. Now select that. Q for press pull. And we'll pull up three millimeters. And then we'll create a sketch again. In this case, I don't need to really create a sketch, I just need to select it. Hit Q for press pull, and I'll do, we'll just say two for now. I forget what I really did to kind of seal it off. Then I'll create a sketch on top of this. I'll come down here and I'll say, let me create a rectangle down here. It's going to be the base of my hook. Hit finish. Come over here and I'll kind of zoom out. Right click on this and create an offset plane. So I'm making an offset plane to go draw on. I'll make it 45 away from the base. I forget what I did. I think I made it more than that, but just an example. And I'll say create a sketch on here. And this is going to be the tip of the, uh, of the hook. Come here and I'll make it a little smaller than that. Hit finish. And so now you can see here's this rectangle way down here. And there's one way up in the plane. And now I can go create a loft. Select that guy, select the top one, and boom, they get connected. Hit OK. Now I will use the little fillet here. I'll select that, select that little edge, and I'll pull it in to kind of round it so I'm not quite so pokey. Now that one's still pokey too, so I'll round that one off. A little too much. Okay, how about 0.5? About one. Point five. Boom, there we go. And hey, I'm in under time. So there we go. So both of them are done. So now all I gotta do is right click on here, save it as STL, and then do the same thing for the other one, save as STL, print them out, and that's kind of how I got the job done. And I actually have 37 seconds left, so well under 10 minutes. So that's how I sketched it up and got it working in Fusion 360. Uh, but to note, uh, you, I, hopefully I showed some of the pieces that I had. Uh, like this little piece right here, that was just a circle. It does really, it helps you out a lot to uh, try the ideas out first in smaller prints like that to see even if the idea works. I want to make sure that that, since I did that 2.8, is it going to be enough to where it actually hooks behind it? It was. So try some cheaper cheaper in material, cheaper in time ideas out um, versus trying to do these full-blown ones. But even with these full-blown ones, they're not that big. So anyway, so I like this. It's working right now for me. Um, I do have some other things. You know, this is kind of like a wall mount system. I could mount other things to it. Now, and honestly, I think if I was going to hang something else, like I'm thinking about hanging some heavy... Uh, pictures on it, I think I might redo it because I think one idea with this, it's nice that it hooks on, but it might be a good idea to have uh, more like a rectangle edge on the side a little further down so it can actually hook underneath on the side really long ways. Because you saw as I kind of put a little pressure on there, I jerked one way, it popped off. Um, which is okay for my chains right now. If they're static, they don't move. But uh, something else, I might want to go back and redesign it. Um, but hey, that's how we learn these things. If you do one thing, Try it, doesn't work out quite as well, and you redesign it. So a rectangle piece down might be a better idea. We'll see. Okay. But anyway, that's what I did. It's working for my purposes, and hopefully this was an interesting video to watch. So anyway, hope you liked it. Uh, put any comments down. If you know any other system out there that someone put together for some wall mounts, you know, post some links out there, because it might be some good ideas to go look at some other people's ideas of what they're doing. So anyway. Fun, fun, fun. After doing this video, now I'm thinking about redoing the design. I think I may try it out and do it in Open SCAD next time. As for what's coming next, I don't know. It's Christmas time. I'm going to spend my time with my family. In fact, I think my son and I are going to build a computer here before Christmas. In the meantime, Merry Christmas to everyone out there, and I hope the next year is a better one for us all.